In this video, we will go through the process of designing, engraving, and cutting out a QR code Wi-Fi coaster in Lightburn. This is an awesome functional coaster that can be scanned to let guests access your Wi-Fi network without needing to manually type in credentials. The goal of this project is to get you familiar with some of the tools available in Lightburn, along with the general workflow of designing and running a job. We will be using the SculptFun S30 Pro, a 10 watt diode laser with air assist, but any diode or CO2 laser will be able to complete this project. The design portion of the project can be done even if you do not have your laser yet. Aside from the machine, you will need the material you will be engraving. For this, we will be using the 3mm project wood included with the S30. Start by heading to the left toolbar and clicking on the A icon to activate the text tool. Then, click towards the middle of your workspace to place the text cursor. Now type the text that you want on your coaster. Since this coaster will contain a QR code for our Wi-Fi network, I just went with Wi-Fi, but you can be as creative as you like. The main consideration is the text being large enough to be legible when engraved. Once complete, click on the mouse cursor icon at the very top of the left toolbar or press the escape key twice to get back into selection mode. Now that we have created something in our workspace, we see a layer in our cuts and layers window. This shows us that the shapes on the layer black are set to line mode with a speed of 12,000 millimeters per minute and a power of 20%. If your laser has air assist that can be controlled in light burn, like the SculptFun S30, you can also turn this on or off under air. Air assist is primarily used for cutting and we want the text to be engraved, so we need to disable it. With the layer selected, you're able to edit the speed, power, pass count, and line interval in the bottom of the cuts and layers window. For the S30 Pro, which has a 10 watt laser, I will change the speed to 8,000 millimeters per minute and the power to 50%. The speed and power will need to be adjusted accordingly for the machine you are using. Now we can preview our work by clicking on the monitor icon in the top toolbar. The preview window will show us our project output based on our current workspace design and layer settings. The lines in black represent the places the laser will fire and the thinner red lines show us the travel movements. Pressing the play button towards the bottom of the window will show us a simulation of the job being run. You can also click and drag the slider to quickly scrub through the job. We can see that with line mode, the laser will outline our shapes. You should check the preview window each time you're going to run a job before sending it to the laser. This will help to ensure the expected output matches what you are seeing and will prevent wasting material. Click OK to close out of the window. While still in selection mode, click on the text you created in your workspace to make it active. You can easily see which objects are active by the moving squiggly outline. With the text selected, we can see the text toolbar at the top is now available. This will allow us to change the font, make the text bold, italicized, or all capitals, as well as adjust spacing and alignment. Lightburn can use any fonts installed on your computer. As you hover over any of the fonts in the font dropdown, the text will live update with that font applied. Take a moment to find a font that you like for your text and select it to apply. For mine, I went with Dossus Extra Bold. If you make a mistake, there are undo and redo arrows in the top toolbar. There is no limit to how far back or forward you can go unless you close Lightburn or create a new file. Next, we will use Lightburn's QR generator tool. In the top toolbar, click on the tools menu and create QR code to activate the tool. Click and drag above your text in the workspace to create the QR code. Exact size can be adjusted later if needed. When you release the mouse, the QR code will be placed and the QR code properties box will appear. We have a few options available and we'll click on the Wi-Fi tab. On this tab, enter your network name and the network password. Remember that this is case sensitive, so be sure to double check spelling and spacing. You can always confirm this before engraving by scanning the QR code on your screen. For this tutorial, I'm going with a generic network and password name. As you enter the information, you can see the QR code update in the workspace. Under authentication type, the most common is the default WPA slash WPA2. Click OK to close out of the window and apply the QR code info. Press escape to go back to the selection tool. Do not worry about aligning the text and QR code yet, but you can resize the QR code using the handles on the corners or the sizing text boxes in the top toolbar. 
I set the size to just below 60 millimeters, which is fairly large for a coaster, so feel free to choose your own dimensions. Anywhere between 40 and 60 millimeters is a good range. To set the gap between the text and QR code, drag the QR code to your desired distance. With the QR code still selected, hold down the shift key and click the text to also select it. In the top toolbar, we have options to align objects horizontally, vertically, or both. We'll use the align vertical option and select align vertical center. You can see the QR code shift over to be perfectly centered with the text vertically. Make sure both objects are still selected and click on group in the top toolbar to group the objects together. Now the QR code and text will be treated as one object when we drag them around, which will help us keep our alignment. Jumping back into the preview window, the QR code also shows that it will be outlined due to line mode being set in the cuts and layers window. We want both the text and QR code to be filled. Currently both the QR code and text are on the layer black, so to change their output, we will choose Fill from the Mode dropdown in the Cuts and Layers window. Back in the preview window, the QR code and text are now filled in. Pressing play on the simulation will show the laser scanning back and forth as it performs the engrave. Next, let's make the outline of our coaster. Click on the circle icon in the left toolbar to activate the ellipse tool. Holding down the shift key, click towards the top left of your design and drag to create a circle. Do not worry about alignment or if it is not perfectly sized. Press the escape key to get back to selection mode. With the circle selected, shift click on the QR code to also select it. In the top toolbar, click on the target icon to vertically and horizontally align the centers of the two shapes. I was pretty happy with the size of my circle, but if you do need to change the size, make sure the circle is active and use the dimensions text box in the top toolbar. You may need to realign it once more after resizing. Currently our circle is also on the layer black, which means it is in fill mode. This means the entire coaster will be filled, which is not what we want. To change this, select the circle to make it active, and select a different color from the color palette in the bottom toolbar. I went with blue, but any color up to option 29 will work fine as well. In the Cuts and Layers window, a new layer has been created for this color. The circle is going to be engraved and not cut, so with it selected, set the speed and power to the same as our other layer. Make sure to disable air and select line mode if that was not the default for the color layer you chose. Now the QR code and text will be filled in, and the circle we created will be a single line pass. If not already selected, click on the circle to make it active, and select the bold O icon in the left toolbar to activate the offset tool. This will open the offset dialog window where we can choose the offset direction, corner style, distance, along with a few other options. For this, we will go with outward direction and round corner style. The distance is personal preference. Because this is already a very large coaster, I went with four millimeters. Click okay to apply the offset. The circle offset will be the path used to cut out our coaster. Select the offset to make it active and choose a different color from the color palette to put it on its own layer. In the Cuts and Layers window, make sure the mode is set to line. For the 10 watt SculptFun S30 on the three millimeter included project wood, I will set the speed to 300 millimeters per minute, the power to 80% and leave air enabled to use air assist for this cut layer. Lightbrain will run each layer in order from top to bottom. Dragging a layer or using the arrows on the side will allow you to move the position of the layers. Generally, you want the engravings to run before the object is cut out, so the way we design this will not require changing layers around. We'll run one last preview to see the text and QR code will be engraved, followed by our ellipse outline, and finally the cutting pass to cut out our coaster. We are now ready to place our project material into our laser's workspace. Since we will be cutting through the material, make sure you have something down to protect your work table. The S30 includes a thin piece of metal and there are lots of options for honeycomb with a solid base that will work great. Next, take the laser head and move it over your material. Most diode lasers will be fixed focus and will include a focusing spacer to set the correct height from the laser to your material. In this case, we will loosen the thumb screws and place the focusing gauge onto our material before dropping the laser onto the gauge and securing the thumb screws. We are now ready to power on our machine. Even a diode laser is powerful enough to blind you. 
The included diode laser cover is not enough to block out harmful UV light. Whenever you are running a job, make sure you are using safety glasses rated for your laser. The S30 comes with limit switches, meaning we are able to use any of the three different start from modes in Lightburn. We covered how the different start from modes work in the video in the card above, which is also linked in the description. For this, I'm going to use current position for my start from and select center for the job origin. With this mode, wherever the laser head is positioned in the workspace is where the center of the job will start. Next, click the bounds frame button in the laser window to have the laser travel the outline of where our job will engrave. This should be done before each job to ensure that the job will be engraving in the correct location on our material. For diode lasers, we can also run the frame command with the laser on a very low power. This will prevent it from marking, but also allows us to see more precisely where the job will be running on our material to help with alignment. To enable this feature, click on the wrench icon in the top toolbar to open device settings. Under other options, enable the laser fire button as well as the laser on when framing option beneath it. Once enabled, click OK to apply and close out of device settings. Now if we go to the move window, we can see there is a text box for a power percentage as well as a fire button. Depending on the diode laser, you may need to play around with the lowest power percentage that produces an output, but for the S30, 0.25% was enough. Clicking the fire button will toggle the laser on or off for the set power. The percentage that you specify in this power text box will be the power that the laser uses when it is framing. Running the bounds frame command again, we can see the laser jog the outline of our design with the laser running at 0.25%. If needed, you can adjust your material in the laser workspace and run the frame command until you're happy with the alignment. All that is left is to press start to run the job. If your laser does not have limit switches, you may get a warning saying that the cut may be out of bounds. Because we have framed the job previously, we know that we are in bounds and the job will run. For the settings I chose, my coaster took around 10 minutes, with the etch taking the most time. The final layer will activate the air assist pump for the S30 and cut out the coaster leaving a nice clean edge. When cutting, the laser will produce a fair amount of smoke. Make sure you're in a well ventilated area or have adequate smoke extraction set up for your machine. You should now have a much better understanding of how to use some of the common tools available in Lightburn as well as the general workflow from design to finished product. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to not miss any new videos and check out our existing tutorial playlist for additional guides on mastering Lightburn.